guys, it's Aoife from Words of Clover and today I'm going to be doing a little bit of a discussion video. Not really a discussion video, more of a celebration video because today I want to be combining a couple of things that I really love and things that I like to celebrate and that is of course Irish fiction, Irish literature and also celebrating women because today I want to talk about some of the amazing Irish novelists that have come out of Ireland in the past few years as well as those who have come before the women who are currently just rocking the book charts in Ireland and what a perfect day to like upload this video then internationally. National Women's Day which is the day that you'll be seeing it and yeah I just wanted to take a moment to take a video a few minutes uh, a couple of minutes who knows 10 12 15 minutes and celebrate the amazing Irish women who are like just coming out with these amazing works of fiction. I really do think that the um, Irish literature in general, like we've always been really well known for, you know, uh, some amazing writers when it comes from, you know, James Joyce, Oscar Wilde and Bram Stoker. Then you have W.B. Yeats, Seamus Heaney, some amazing poets. But I really do think that in the past few years, now I am completely biased obviously, but I really, really do think that the voice of the Irish female novelist has become so strong and so powerful. Um, looking at like, you know, people like Marion Keyes and then Sally Rooney who have like worldwide fame and people who have, you know, had their, um, their novels uh, adapted to movies or TV shows. And yeah, I just, like I feel so proud as an Irish woman um, every time I see a work created by another Irish woman and um, kind of make it into the mainstream. So yeah, I just want to take like like a few minutes and just celebrate all those women and kind of going back from the start. The type of voice that um, Irish women are sharing in their literature these days and um, some of the influences as well as just some of the people who kind of paved the way for those who are publishing now. 1900s, Elizabeth Bowne was publishing some amazing works of fiction. She is known as kind of writing big country house style novels. Now hands up, like I have not read Elizabeth Bowne yet. Some of these authors that I'm going to be talking about today, I have not yet read and I actually feel like there's like a backlist of Irish female authors that I still have yet to read. I think I've been focusing a lot on some of the newer authors that have come on the scene in the past five, ten years and I haven't quite looked back enough um, at some of the authors female authors who really paved the way for those ones as I've said. Elizabeth Bowne has written some books that have been set around the 1920s around the time of the War of Independence and the rise of the Irish Free State so her some of her books are set in a really interesting point of time in history and then if we go down to the 1960s one of the big Irish authors that was published at the time who made a very big wave in Ireland and for at the time all the wrong reasons that was of course Edna O'Brien with the Country Girls trilogy. Edna O'Brien really kind of pushed the boat out a little bit with her novel The Country Girls. This kind of tackled some things that hadn't really been touched upon or dared in Irish fiction particularly written by an Irish woman at the time. Um, so we see a young girl growing up uh, kind of challenging a little bit. She's almost like not really a good girl gone bad but maybe girls gone wild a little bit. A bunch of girls explores two girls growing up and we see them explore their sexuality in a way and um, they move to Dublin and they have relationships with men. They have relationships with men who maybe aren't really the ones that they that they should be seeing and we also see um, time we also see some of their school life when they are within a Catholic school or in a Catholic institution and um, we see how, you know, that's not as, you know, I guess, not as pristine as the Catholic Church would always like to portray. I know Brian, she, this was published in the 60s. Her book was literally burned by her local parish priest. Um, it was banned in Ireland and she was practically banished from, from Ireland as well for writing this book. But she kept going and um, she obviously published the whole trilogy and now it is like a really well-known book. It is a much loved book and Edna Brian has kept going. She has published more works um, but this is definitely one of the ones that really, you know, really sealed the type of voice that she has. It's a little bit, you know, a little bit sexy, um, a little bit dark, there's humour in it. Um, and she's really, you know, she's really like paving the way. She really, she knew what she was doing when she wrote this book. She knew she was going to be, um, you know, ruffling a few feathers, uh, if you will. And she kept going with it. And I really do think that if it wasn't for Edna O'Brien and like kind of what she tried to do with this book and, you know, the, the, the leaps she took by daring to write this book and daring to publish it. Um, 
like who knows like I'm sure there would have been people who would have come afterwards who would have made like a bigger impact as well but um yeah I definitely think Edna O'Brien walked so people like Sally Rooney could run if you know what I mean. The mother if you will or the grandmother of the mod modern Irish uh, female novelist she is the one that really paved the way and then looked back and held out her hand and brought the others along with her. The other things I will say about these about like Irish literature and Irish publishing is I've seen it myself just online but I've also, when I was kind of looking and like doing a little bit of research for this video as well, a lot of things that were said is the supportive nature um, of women in Irish publishing and authors celebrating each other and helping each other and never failing to turn around and help the next person along and help the next woman along with her work. And um, yeah, there was definitely an air of this like really lovely supportive nature. And I really, really enjoyed that. Like women helping women, like we're all about that. After Edna O'Brien, you obviously had Anne Enright also in her novels was able to explore that idea of Irish family and um, the Catholic Church, the, the the effect of the Catholic Church in Irish family. She has been well celebrated for her work and has won a lot of awards as has, has been able to explore relationships and love uh, religion all within her work. Emma Donoghue is also a well-known Irish author. She was obviously the author of Room which became a really like a film which won a lot of awards and she has also written a lot of books um, that really explored like sexuality and, and lesbian fiction as well which you know in like the 90s early 2000s and in, in Ireland like it still was something that you might not see as often um, as you do now. One of the things I love about Emma Donoghue as well is I feel like she can just turn to any genre and make an amazing story. I think that's a really like a skill that some authors don't have. They kind of have to stick with the genre they are known for. Like it would be a little bit strange if we suddenly saw Sally Rooney turn to historical fiction or turn to a slightly more fantasy-esque setting. Um, I, like I, like maybe she could do it I'm not sure but it would definitely be odd and it would be maybe even a little bit disconcerting for her you know really beloved fans to suddenly be reading a different type of genre where with Emma Donoghue I feel like she can just do anything she can write contemporary fiction she can write um historical fiction really well she has dabbled with kind of more fantasy-esque fiction and fairy tale retellings with her short story collection Kissing the Witch um she can really like just do it all in my opinion I just love Emma Donoghue and I just really love the way she explores a lot of themes in her novels especially around um as I said relationships women women relationships I really really enjoy that and you can never talk about Irish female authors without mentioning who I kind of would think would be the queen of um, Irish bookland is definitely Marion Keys. I like I would almost I, I would bet money on it that you could not walk into a majority of Irish households and not have a Marion Keys uh, book on the shelves somewhere even if like, no one in the house reads I'm sure there's a Marion Keys book somewhere it's just one of those it feels like it has to be like a staple along with like the Lions or Barry's Tea I don't know where you people fall in that category along with the Lions or Barry's Tea the Bread and Spread like a Marion Keys book has to be up there as well. It is just, is an Irish staple. It's a true Irishism is having a bit of a Marion Keys book. Obviously, as I said, she is extremely popular both in Ireland, in the UK and uh, more worldwide. And I feel like Marion Keys' writing and her books, her novels, her characters have really grown with her in her career as an author. Um, we've seen her tackle so many different things, things that have affected her own life and things that she has just explored within, her, within novels. Um, things like, you know, alcoholism, addiction, depression, domestic violence, abortion and then in her later novels we've also seen some really great family dynamics and then also just like female characters who are dealing with getting older and what that means for them, what it means for them as a wife, as a lover, um, as a mother and like she's really just been able to branch out and really like blossom her characters into something really really wonderful. Alongside some of the more contemporary authors at Marion Keys we do have some again some more Irish staples like authors that you would tend to see on a lot of Irish bookshelves, the people like Cathy Kelly, Patricia Scanlon, Elia Hearn, um, there are so many. Crime is also, I feel, a genre where Irish women are really showing that they can do really, really well. Um, one of my favourites has to be Liz Nugent, who has come out with some amazing books over the past few years, such as Skin Deep and Lying in Wait. Um, Liz is this the master at creating these really dark, like, psychologically like chilling characters characters that are twisted in ways that are very very mundane in ways that like you don't really see like it's not really you know these people going around with like knives and murdering and killing people in the street like these are people who are just really in their own ways deep down are just really really twisted and really dark and 
are very very morally grey characters and they are just so fascinating to follow and I just love anytime Liz Nugent has a new book out I just cannot wait until I open that first page and see the type of character we are following and seeing what she creates because she's just so so good at those twisty characters. While Tana French is looking at you know some of the crimes in Dublin um obviously Dublin Murder, they are based in Dublin. We're kind of, if you kind of go across a little bit, then Lisa McInerney, she, not really crime like novels, but definitely like crime based in that she is looking, she has her Cork novels, which is, um, the first book is The Glorious Heresies, which is a fantastic novel. And she is kind of looking at almost like gang life in Cork and how you can be like, almost indoctrinated into a gang and the the ways people like end up in these gangs and we are following a cast of characters who are all mixed up in some bad things one way or another and I really love the way Lisa like like her her writing is just absolutely beautiful like there were a couple of things that I highlighted when I read The Glorious Heresies and um, I think she is just a wonderful writer and also when it comes to that gritty gang violence and how scary it can be to just like be sucked into that kind of crime um, and that kind of gang and not know how to get out and especially if you know you are in a in a situation where you're in an environment where everyone else is doing this how how do you get out. Then we also come to kind of the more modern contemporary authors people like Sally Rooney who you know is probably one of the most well well-known Irish female authors at this time because of the you know the wild success of her novel Normal People and S Sally Rooney is able to you know these are these are um authors who are following characters you know in their 20s to their early 30s characters who are millennials and um, who have grown up in a really interesting time in Ireland and um, they've seen a lot of change in Ireland they've grown up you know maybe like when they were younger seeing the, the the Celtic Tiger and then the depression following the Celtic Tiger then also um characters who have seen you know gay marriage legalized in Ireland as well as uh, repeal the eighth and the abortion referendum people who were very you know a, a generation who were very loudly um you know marching for for their rights for both the rights to marry whoever you wanted and then the rights to your own body and I think this creates both both an author and then characters who are all really, really compelling and really, really relatable in a lot of ways for, again, Irish millennials, young Irish people who are reading these books. And, like, there's a lot of times in Sally Rooney's novels where if I don't, like, directly relate to the people I definitely know people who are very much like them even if they do sometimes seem a little bit stuck up and un like insufferable in their own ways and I also think they are really good at Sally Rooney in particular is really good at creating characters who are just terrible at communication and I think there are still a lot of people who are really really bad at that like people who you know will always text someone and like not pick up a phone call and be like literally anxious about like ringing anyone like these are the people in Sally Rooney's novels who are like afraid to make a phone call um, and are just really really bad at communicating. We also see this with Nisha Dolan's um, Exciting Times and we see again sexuality being explored here with um, an openly bisexual character. And then also things like Megan uh, Nolan's Acts of Desperation. You'll see a really strong Irish voice coming out in YA books as well. So we have Deirdre Sullivan who has written things, um, a lot of like different stories, Perfectly Preventable Death is one of them. And then uh, Sarah Marie Griffin who has written Other Words for Smoke. So some of these uh, authors are also really, really good at bringing in these really strong female characters as well who are openly talking about some of the the things that are happening in Ireland, the things that have happened in Ireland, um, again, I feel like in Irish literature we are seeing, particularly with um, female authors, we are seeing the change of Ireland being discussed a lot, things like um, the mother and baby homes and how people talk about that now and aren't afraid. It's not something that has been like kept in the dark anymore. People are talking about it. People are talking about the injustice of it. And I see this being brought up a lot in different forms in Irish novels now. Um, that shame and the stigma that, that happened because of the Catholic Church. Um, we see, we're, we're seeing like a whole new like wave of Irish authors who aren't afraid of the Catholic Church anymore when you think about when Edna O'Brien was publishing her books and the Catholic Church was trying to ban it because girls were having sex in it. We're having books where like teenage characters can openly talk about the mother and baby homes. And then we're also seeing like books like Louise O'Neill's um, where patriarchy is you know while Ireland has changed in so many ways and for so many ways the better. Patriarchy is still well and alive where we see in Louise O'Neill's novels there is still that kind of you know 
lad culture and um, victim blaming uh, sexual violence against women and how things can happen in a very small town that are very detrimental towards maybe a female population when it comes to things like lad banter and um acts that that men can do and we also have some great irish authors who are coming out with some fantastic um uh fantasy books and corcoran's the queen of coin and whispers which is a fantastic high fantasy novel and it has a lesbian romance in it which is fantastic to see and then also books like uh, in other lands by sarah reese brennan who is just always able to bring that irish humor to everything that she writes and she's able to create these amazing characters and then we also have a whole array of amazing female um children's authors as well like judy curtin anna Carey. Uh, Sarah Webb and then also Helena Duggan who wrote A Place Called Perfect which is also a really really um, well-known and well-loved children's novel. There's just so many amazing Irish women out there who are writing amazing books and um, I've just really noticed this really amazing kind of strong voice uh, voices that have been silenced for a very very long time within Ireland because of the patriarchy because of the Catholic Church uh, because of a lot of different things and I feel like finally the past 10 20 years we've really seen this this strong female voice like open up and sing out and like come up with these amazing amazing works of fiction and I just can't wait for the next few years and seeing all the new amazing Irish authors who are going to come out and yeah it's a very very exciting time to to be watching the Irish publishing industry because I think that there's going to be amazing um amazing books coming out. I'd love to know what you guys think um have you read some of these authors that I've talked about what is your opinion um on the Irish female like novelists. Happy International Women's Day to everyone out there and I'll see you guys again next time. Bye!